Hi, I'm Kevin Baldwin. And I'm Eric Vernon. And together, we are Baldwin and Vernon. And one of our major areas of practice of law is employment discrimination. We prefer to stay in state court as much as we can, as opposed to federal court, and we will do a... a we will do a webcast on the differences between state court and federal court later. But in state court, we have traditionally stayed in Missouri and sued or represented people dealing with the Missouri Human Rights Act. A few years ago, the Missouri legislature saw fit to make some profound changes to the Missouri Human Rights Act, and those changes are what we want to talk to you about today. Kevin? Well, quickly, in August of uh, 2017, the law changed. The interesting thing was the law that came into effect was much more restrictive and much more difficult for employees to make their case. It also limited their damages. And it shouldn't be lost on the people out there that you should know this. The individual that proposed that legislation at the time himself was being sued for employment discrimination under the Missouri Human Rights Act. And so what he was attempting to do was give better protection to his friends in the legislature and his friends who own large corporations. Well, and foreign corporations, let's start with that. Who, there, there was a change, wasn't there, about who you can sue? Absolutely. Uh, before August of 2017, if an individual manager discriminated against you, sexually harassed you, or, and I'm not talking about touching, but uh, asking you things like, hey, if you want to get ahead, why don't you be nicer? Why don't you wear low-cut dresses? Things like that. In those situations, you could sue the individual. For instance, like a guy like Harvey Weinstein, if you were his employee, you could have sued him individually and not just the company he worked for. And that makes a difference in, in two ways. One, one issue is because you can sue the individual that becomes public knowledge. The lawsuit, because it's the United States of America and everything is public, and we, we have in Missouri CaseNet, other employers and other employees can look on CaseNet and see this individual has been sued before. And now, under the new law, where we can no longer sue the individual, we can only sue the corporation, you can no longer see, uh, and a new employer can't see, that another that a potential employee has been sued for sexual harassment or for racial discrimination in the past. One of the things I call it is it's the Workplace Predator Protection Act. That's really what it was, because what it allowed is it allowed people to hide that factor. Imagine all the people who would have known that Bill Cosby was doing the things he was doing to the people that worked for him. Or you talk about Harvey Weinstein or Jeffrey Epstein, the people that worked for them and who were subjected to sexual harassment. In those situations, had individual liability been available to those victims when they sued, the world would have been put on notice, other employers and employees. Now, the other issue is, and this is kind of strange that the Missouri legislature would do this because of this, but what it ends up doing is treating Missouri corporations differently than foreign corporations. And when I say foreign, I don't necessarily mean foreign from the United States, but foreign corporations mean a corporation that's that's based in Delaware. And most of them are, because most people incorporate in the state of Delaware other states that are more beneficial to them. But the thing about that is this. If you're an individual who works here, let's say you're in Clay County, and you're suing a, a AT&T in Clay County, the store that's in, in Liberty in, uh, in Clay County, and you have filed a lawsuit against your employer for sexual harassment, what AT&T can do now is they can remove it to federal court. And in federal court, you're subject to laws where the law has been interpreted by Uh, people in Texas, it's been interpreted by people in Kansas, and suddenly those people's norms are the ones that take hold and what the court has to follow. Now, one of the other big changes was in what we, as a term of art, refer to as the motivating factor. And Kevin? Well, it used to be that the law was a zero tolerance. Missouri's former law the MHRA, Missouri Human Rights Act, has zero tolerance for any discriminatory action, which means based on your age, race, sex, national origin, religion, or disability. If those played any part in the decision to treat you differently, it was against the law. However, what they've done now is they've gone from contributing factor to motivating factor, which means as an employee, you would have to prove to a jury that their decision was based or motivated on the fact, for instance, that you're female. They'd have to say, well, all things being equal, you know, she's done pretty well, but he's done pretty well, you know, but, you know, but she's a woman. So let's go ahead and, you know, let's put the man in that position 
that's not a motivating factor. That's a contributing factor, but they would say, well, performance issues or better with the clients, things like that. It gives the employer more protection to make that discriminatory decision. Right, because the employer always comes up what we refer to as a pretext. They always come up with some reason, some some rationale that is not your, your sex or your race or your religion, and they say this is the reason. Um, and, and so in the under the old law, we used to have we used to show juries pictures of um, of an eyedropper. Kevin has a, the, he would show the jury a picture of an eyedropper dropping poison into a swimming pool, and the point was, forget the pretext. If race was a contributing factor, if race was a was a drop of poison dropped into that swimming pool, then that would pollute the entire pool, and that and that polluted the entire motivation, and that's all it took to prove that that race was the reason that they fired the person or treated them poorly. And not just race, but it could have been based on sex right. or even age or your disability. Now, the other thing that's come about is the other change that they made in the law. So what we've talked about now is they you can't sue the individual, even if they're sexually harassing you. And now that you also have a different factor, a different standard of proof that you have. But one of the things they also changed was the damage caps, which means how much can you win? How, mu how much damages can you be afforded under the law? And that did change. So traditionally, there's, there's essentially three kinds of damages. When we, when we file a lawsuit and we're asking the um, opposing party to, to make you whole, there's three kinds of damages. There's economic damages, which is based on your wages and your um, and your what's the word I'm looking for? Well, compensatory damages. Compensatory. Well, and and there's also then pain and suffering, which emotional distress damages, and then there's punitive damages. So you can get paid. We can make to make you whole. They need to pay your lost wages and benefits. And to make you whole, they also have to pay for the pain that they have caused you. And then beyond making you whole, there's a thing called punitive damages where in order to convince the employer not to do this again to somebody else, a jury can, until, can award damages called punitive damages, to, like it sounds like, to punish the company. It's a lot like a traffic fine. For instance, you've seen uh, handicap signs. Handicap signs that say violation, parking here is a violation, could cost you anywhere from $50 to $500. Now, the idea is that they want to deter the conduct. Now, the first time you have an offense, it might be $50. But if you keep doing it, then that gives the ability for the judge to ratchet up that fine from the 50 to the 500. And that's what punitive damages was designed to do, was to stop the illegal behavior. But corporations don't like being held to account. And so the Missouri legislature has put caps. And they've been doing this for a number of years. Um, what was it, 10 years ago or so, they changed the law so that the cap was a punitive damage could not be more than five times the judgment, which, which was all the other damages put together. Um, but now they've made it even more restrictive. And, and so nowadays, the caps are, and it's, it's on the punitives and compensatories together. Yes. And the caps are, and it's based on the size of the company which makes some amount of sense. But if the company has between five and 100 employees, there is a $50,000 cap on both compensatory and punitive damages together. So no matter how bad their conduct was, no matter how many billions of dollars the corporation has, if you win your lawsuit, the very most you can get in addition to the the weighed lost wages is fifty thousand dollars. Now that's if a that's if the company you work for has less than a hundred employees, and also that doesn't include lost wages, which are usually right. substantial, but very seldom do they ever get well into six figures. So what we're talking about here is they limited your ability to get emotional distress damages. And those can be significant at times. We've had cases where individuals who have had cancer, we had individuals who had cancer, they tell their boss they have cancer, and within a week or two, they're let go for some fake reason. And we're able to prove that. We've had cases go to trial where we've proven that. But can you imagine the emotional distress that a, that a person goes through when they've been subjected to a wrongful termination, denying them benefits because they have cancer. Now, you can only imagine what that, what that does to that person, and you cannot let a corporation get away with that. 
Now, if you work for a little bit bigger company, 100 to 200 employees, the cap on those damages is $100,000. If you work for a bigger company with 200 to 500 employees, um, you can get up to $200,000 in punitives and compensatories together. And then the final cap is for over 500 employees, then you have the potential to to get $500,000 in emotional distress and or punitive damages. So basically the biggest corporations in America, billions and billions of dollars, can treat their employees horribly based on illegal reasons like their race or their gender or disability like cancer. And the most a jury or a judge is allowed to order them to pay in, in because of that is $500,000 plus the lost wages. And what you have to understand is right now you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, they're not going to do that. They would never do that. Understand this. Discrimination is intentional. They do this on purpose. And sometimes they do a cost-benefit analysis. And for large corporations, for instance, uh, we went against uh, American Family Insurance. We've gone against them before. We've also gone against uh, other large corporations as well. We've had million dollar verdicts against them because of their egregious actions. And a jury looked at them and said, look, this small amount of money isn't going to make them change the way they do their business. When you're talking about a billion dollar corporation, then you need to get, you need to get into their head. You need to make sure that they're willing to change the way they do business. And corporations, the only thing they really understand is money because we can't put them in jail. These are civil laws, not criminal laws. So when we go after them, we're taking these on on behalf of our clients like prosecutors. I was a former prosecutor. We're prosecuting the case against them, but the punishment can only be money damages. They cannot go to jail. They cannot be put in prison. So that is the only measure you have to try not only to compensate the wronged employee, but also to make sure that they do not engage in that activity again. You hear the phrase slap on the wrist, and essentially that is what the Missouri legislature has dictated, that corporations in employment discrimination cases can no longer receive more than a slap on the wrist. Now, in these situations, one nice thing does still exist. They still allow for attorney's fees to be paid separately, which means that if we represent you on a claim, and if we actually try it and win it at trial, the judge can assess attorney's fees be paid by them. So even if you're capped at $50,000, the bill for our representation could be paid by the other side. And sometimes, and oftentimes, that bill is in excess of several hundreds of thousands of dollars. But what allows us to take these cases are the fact that we're doing a public good, we're representing a wrongfully terminated employee, and the judges recognize that. And so the legislature still recognizes that, which is why they allow attorney's fees to be assessed in these cases. I think that about wraps up the major changes to the Missouri Human Rights Act. I think it does. Thank you for tuning in.